Meditation can't save you from the inky, ropey tentacles of the corner that will pull <laughs> you, pull you into the oblivion. Right now, I am flying through the galaxy that is also the a brain that is also like a hot naked lady. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> Hello, Jonah with the game mechanics here. Just calling to let you know that psionics are back. And oh God! What's up, asshole? We're back and stronger than ever. Journey through dungeons and slay dragons with our minds. We will. Mm. It's true! I've rubbed vigorously on my J.O. Crystal and it has brought me unforeseen power and changed my class! This is Thought Boy's Revengeance. I think you mean Thought Boy's Ray of Vengeance! Zom. Oh no, I feel like we're gonna take a trip to the corner today, boys. Zom. No, probably not. I know that if we just breathe through our emotions, we will be able to escape the grievance corner. <laughs> levitating. <laughs> levitating full of love and light and life. Joe, I'm going to just throw this out here. Yeah. What, what is this whole thing on? Psionics. <laughs> Guess what you're not going to escape? <laughs> the mind dome. The mind dome. Um, um, um. Take a trip to my mind dome. Unrelated, Delaney and I, what the fuck is going on with his background? <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about. The void has taken its toll. Oh, it has. Shit. Welcome to my nightmare. What horrors hath man wrought? It's Sanic. <laughs> there he is. He has to go fast. That's oh, oh yeah, just get the just That's the his eye, curse. just the eye of. So here's my question: What is this? The entirety uh, of your image? It's there, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but as bad CGI characters. Shit. The four horsemen of live action apocalypse: Sonic is conquest, Dumbo is famine, Mr. Mime is war, and Genie is death. I mean, yeah. That's just scripture. That's what was seen in th in the vision. That's just what the Bible says. That is what re was revealed. Hello, friends, oh, and we are back. Mm, Joe is in a very oh, calm and thoughtful oh, state of mind. Because oh, the Thought oh, Boys are back in town. New psionics. Yonath Darkana has arrived. Thought Boys 2, Rhea Vangance. Rhea Vangance. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Yeah, just give me shit because I spelled revengeance wrong in the chat. I thought it was on purpose and it was the funniest shit I'd ever heard. <laughs> uh, I think, it, well, it's probably because it's not even an actual word, so I was like, I don't even, how do you spell that? I don't know. Raya Raven Vengeance? Gents. Raya Vangance. Raya Vangance. Raya but yes, Vangance. this is psionic options Raya revisited. Vangance. Oh, we visited them once and then we left for them to get their shit together. Now we've come back and we've got a whole different load of stuff to look at here. And you know what, boys? I'm just gonna... It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but you know what? I'm putting my foot down here and saying that I like this one. On the whole, I like this one. I agree. I, I am shocked to, to say so, uh, but I do see one of the very first... It catches the eye when I'm looking at this PDF. The sentence, We've abandoned the psionics wizard and the following <laughs> spells. And I'm in. I'm already in. Thank you for abandoning him by the side of the road. He didn't add anything, and hopefully now he'll live on the farm upstate. That is to say, die. Mm, no, I'm going to I'm going to roam the land with my crystal. Was bestowed upon me. I, I completed my internships. So I've I've got the crystal. Damn yeah, it. you're on the crystal. Yeah, 420. Uh, put meth. We are recording this on 421. Uh, Joe is taking full advantage of oh. the video capabilities of our first Zoom recording. And Andrew is... I, uh, what, you, what, you, what is this one? Looks like an anime of some sort. It's hentai I, out of context. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> if you could see what it said. He's, he's moving around. He's moving around, again. folks. Hey, just so you know, oh, for no. for context for you lovely people, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll put up the video of this one on Patreon just so that you can really get into these goofs. You're the, the slut Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> okay. Oh um, 
Anyway, anyway, <laughs> the reason why I'm 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 so dropped in and mindful right now. You're very namaste right now. I'm very namaste, but that's what the mind is. It's a way to kill goblins. And the goblins are, can be real goblins or they can be the goblins in your mind. Thought goblins. Mm. You've got little mm. goblins running around and they're just like taking, you know, shits on everything and you gotta use your mind to make their heads blow up or something. And that's what meditation is. It's exploding the shit goblins in your brain. Yeah, for sure. That that just about sums well, that's it for this episode of Talk and Shop. I think that Joe's just summed it up, folks. But no, there are a few things that we're going to be looking at here on the show today. We've got three subclasses. The Psy Knight, the revised fighter subclass, previously called the Psychic Warrior. Uh, we're full Jedi now, folks. We've got the Soul Knife, a revised rogue subclass, which uh, has come a long way from being uh, the shittiest option of the psionics subclasses back when that was its own thing. And I feel like Andrew's found another Zoom background. <laughs> no, I'm just reading these out of context things, and it's amazing. Oh, it's oh, pretty no. funny. <laughs> it's incredible. We've got the Psionic Soul, a revised sorcerer subclass, Andrew's favorite, that was previously called the Aberrant Mind. We've got three spells with a psionic theme. I think that they're all ones that we've seen before, if I remember correctly. And then five feats that can confer psionic powers to any character. Uh, and as Joe mentioned, we have abandoned the Psionics Wizard. Fuck the Psionics Wizard. Only those wizard. with raw mind. You can't learn these mind powers. They just gotta come raw. Unless you take a feat. Right. right. In but which still, case, you can't you learn happen. them. Unless you just take a feat. You can't, you can't read a book. Unless you just take a feat. Nah, in dude, which case, anyone can have it. You're just unlocking your chakras. So I love stupid. unlocking my chakras. Hey, everyone, I'm just gonna say it right now. I'm about to shit on almost everything. <laughs> Let's just poop it on out. Let's poop it on out there. Like I'm, I'm going to throw that out there. So you're the goblin. You're the mind goblin. You're the one running around and pooping on everything inside Try there. and stop me. We just I'm gotta, industry. Um, take you out and just, I don't know, Yeah. make your head explode. I'm, I'm a 401k. I'm your job. I'm reality. Enjoy your mind space game. I'm about to crush it. So what is psionics? Again, we've, we've already been over this in the previous talking shop about this, but in earlier editions of D&D, uh, they've been a bunch of different things, but there have been a few consistent elements. The powers arise from the user rather than from an external source. The psionic aptitude can be used to cast spells or create effects beyond the limits of those spells, and they are uh, sort of associated with psionic characters, telepathy, tele telekinesis, clairvoyance, and, and stuff like that. I like here they say that they experimented in 2017 with the unofficial character class, the Mystic, which focused on psionic powers, and everybody fucking hated it. And they're like, we hear you. We get it. We get why you hated it. They said it was too complex. It encroached on other classes' territory. Too powerful. Which was both, all true. Whatever. All completely true. We've decided to say farewell to the Mystic and explore other ways of giving players psi-themed powers, as they did with Gotta the great say, old I one, I appreciate Warlock. they let go. Yeah. yeah. I like that, I like that there, there's an admission of, like, that really didn't work, so we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then it just goes on through and says, we hope you enjoy, da da da, -da. check it out. Shall I take the first one, gents? Please, go on, go on with your bad self with the Psy Knight. The Psy Knight. A third level of fighter gains the martial archetype feature. Here is a playtest option for that feature, the Psy Knight. Awake to the psionic power within, a Psy Knight is a fighter who augments their physical might with Psy-infused weapon strikes, telekinetic lashers, lashes, and barriers of mental force. Da 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 da. It has a bunch of flavor options. Uh, you have honed your psionic abilities through solo discipline under a tutelage of a master. Maybe you have a jack-off crystal in your in your butt. Uh, whatever. You certainly do! Psionic talent, third level. You harbor a wellspring of psionic power within yourself uh, that ebbs and flows as you channel it in various ways. This power is represented by your psionic talent die, the starting size of which is D6. I remember when we last when we last danced this little dosy -si do that my biggest one of my biggest issues with it is that there was nothing actually concretely different about Psy versus any other fucking magic. It all seemed the same. It, it didn't have, like, its own mechanic like you would expect, like a druid to have its own mechanic, or a paladin has the smite mechanic, da 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 This is literally a new way to play, the like, a new system of rolling dice and what those dice mean in the game, which yeah. I'm always a down A new mechanic for. that makes it feel different than other stuff. 
psionic talent options. You can use the die in the following ways. A protective field, a psi-powered leap, or a telekinetic strike. And those kind of do what you would think they do. Protective field, you can use a reaction to roll your psionic talent die and reduce the damage taken by the number plus your intelligence as you create a momentary shield of telekinetic force. That's awesome. You, as a reaction, see somebody take a big hit, boom, you can re reduce it by up to, what, like 11? Uh, if you have a high intelligence and you know, roll really high. Psi-powered leap, you can add a uh, number of feet equal to twice the number rolled plus your plus twice your intelligence modifier. It's an insane amount of like distance you can get from leaping. And I like that it's not well, an it's, either it's a or. It's pretty good. It's well, twice the number rolled. It's it's not a huge amount of extra feet. Like if it was five times, then it would be like you get a full space for each number you roll. Uh, so it's you know plus twice your intelligence modifier. So if you've got like max intelligence, that's ten. It's, yeah, but you know. if it was five and you were up to the point where you rolled a d12, right? That and would you be went obscene. twelve spaces. That's you'd true. Be off a battle yeah. map. So it's not it's not unreasonable, is what I'm saying. You can you can enhance it by a. a Amount that's like that's fair to give you a little extra boosty boost, and your die does grow like later uh, in this class. And telekinetic strike, you can propel your attacks with telekinetic force once on each of your turns. Immediately after you deal damage to a target within thirty feet of you with a weapon attack, you can roll your talent die and also deal force damage to the e target equal to the number rolled. Awesome. Here's how it becomes a mechanic. If you roll the highest number on your psionic talent die, it decreases by one die size after the roll. So if you have a d6 as your talent and you roll max damage, 6, it becomes a d4. And if it's a d4 and you roll a 4, it becomes unusable until you finish a long rest. Conversely, if you roll a 1 on your psionic talent die, you roll the minimum amount, it increases by one die size as you roll, as you are conserving psionic energy for later use. When you finish a long rest, it resets to its starting size, and then it increases to a d8, a d10, and at 17th level, a d12. As a bonus action, you have Psy Replenishment. You can calm your mind for a moment, um, and restore your psionic talent die to its starting size, and you cannot use that feature again until you finish a long rest. This is the mechanic that actually gives you the feeling of being a 11 in Stranger Things, or a, uh... Professor X, where you really push yourself for a second, and then your next one isn't probably going to be as strong. Or, conversely, you take a breather, and you push it right back out, and you get everything you wanted out of your psionic abilities again. I love it. I really love this. It's simple. It, so it sounds complicated on paper, but as soon as you started rolling dice, you would know, oh, this represents an ebb in my powers. This represents a flow. I'm back up to full strength. I love See it. I struggle with it, mm -hmm. and like my my struggle with it is this, and like my problem is it's not enough of a gamble, and that's where I struggle with it when mm. it comes to like other things. Like you have just a good of a chance of like going back up the dice scale as you do of dropping down it, which is where like I struggle with it because then it doesn't feel like a resource. I also don't think you would almost ever run out of it except for early levels, mm. because like you have to have ex horrible luck. Max, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And that's like my biggest problem with something later. I think it's a great jumping off point. Do, but do like, you, I don't know. Do you think that, I? because I see what you're saying, that when you're at like a D8 or whatever, all of a sudden you have to go through D6 and then D4 before you run out of your ability, right? So it's increasingly less likely that you're actually going to be plumb out of your I mean, your power. odds go up as you go down, but mm -hmm. like... It's still never even like above a, a, a risk. The, the the highest your odds are of failure is one in four. To to me, that is acceptable and appropriate with the the smallness of the abilities it gives you. Do you know what I mean? If this was like uh, a more powerful like first level ability or more powerful die ability, then I would want it to have a, a greater risk and a greater ability I totally like, agree to with be you replenished when it comes to the fighter my struggle is and, and we can talk about it when we get there is like anytime they allow this to open up to skill trees mm. like anytime it's like if i'm a bard and i get access to this in in charisma when i get to higher levels i'm going to use this every charisma check i get and and then it quickly becomes like 
let's talk of like let's talk about a sorcerer that's really high charisma, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the fact that they then roll a d8 on top of this. The bard gives them a d8 inspiration. Mm-hmm. Somebody gives them guidance, and somebody gives them bless. Right, you're now rolling two d8s and two d4 plus whatever you actually roll, mm-hmm. and if you can get advantage on, like you know what I mean, like yeah, mm-hmm. that's where I get like frustrated with this mechanic. I wish it would stay away from skill checks, and I would love it. Do you think that a, a, a reasonable alternate would be if because there are a couple skill check things in here, uh, and I think that there's one of them. Uh, I believe one of the rogue ones that's skill check related automatically decreases the die by a size. I think that's fine. Like, yeah. I think it's fine when, like, you're actually paying yeah. for it. Like, and, like, that's where I was like, I'll talk about the rogue when I get there, like, in yeah. the sense of, like, yeah. that doesn't bother me as much. Mm. It's just, like, I think there's so much in this game already to succeed automatically skill checks in the sense of, like, once players figure out how to help on things and, like, once you, like, realize how to get advantage and, like, yeah. how to, like, whatever, right, you start losing out on the ability to, like, as a DM, Lose. right, use failure to progress anything forward. Yeah. C- compare that to Uncharted Worlds or any of the Apocalypse systems where the most you're really going to get to add to a roll just on baseline is two. And it's going to be like, yeah. And I know it's like a, l- a lesser range to, to fall in with only the two D6s. But nevertheless, I it, we've seen it when we've played failing in those games is literally a way to move the plot forward and i think the it's same is a good true for thing d d too mm-hmm. but not as written I, I see what you mean though because a lot of skill checks are meant to just be kind of time waste do you know what i mean it's just like something in I between i think they can yeah yeah it, the, the it's also the dm the a lot reward. i think i think bad. when you like like the classic case would be like a door, <laughs> right? It's right? a door. It's it's like either open or it can't get through the door. Yeah. It's one of the best moments in all of the first season of Critical Role because they spend thirty minutes trying to get through a door when they can just kill a dragon, right? Like, yeah, you know what I mean. And and it's just a moment where you get to see like the game for what the game is. Sometimes I love that shit. I just like I hate the I hate the like power gaming like let's never fail. That like I hate that as well. This yeah. can open up to. I'm not. I'm not even really dogging on the fighter. It's just like whenever this is like and and boost your skill checks. I'm like just Adding stay away bonuses. from skill checks. Like yeah. let let the the classes that invest in like being good at skills mm-hmm. be the classes that are good at skills. Yeah. What another another thing I like about this setup though, like kind of how Uncharted Worlds or, or other those things, if I'm ever playing those and my character fails, I kind of go, yes, nice. Something's going to happen as a result of this and I get to shape it through the lens of character. There's a little bit of a bonus here, whether or not you completely succeed or you completely fail. Because if you completely fail, then, oh, cool, I get to replenish my sigh, and next time I'll probably do better. And if you completely succeed, it's like, boom, that felt good. Oh, now I have a cost, which well, so I think makes it feel better. Right. I love the mechanic. Yeah, as it, but it's as, the as applications. Written. I just hate, like, how much it affects. Yeah. yeah. Just, like, like, how many things it can it can be a part of. Yeah. Just if, if we, if you remove it from skill checks, it feels a lot better for you. Oh yeah. 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 I think that's fair. Or if there's a, or if there's just a, a heavier cost to Correct. using it with skill checks. I don't like, think it's enough of a gamble for the amount of application that it has. Yeah. yeah. Like the if expense. you, uh, like if you had the chance of hurting yourself, mm-hmm. like take psychic you damage the or max, something, yeah. you know what I mean? Or like, what what about like on a one on like a total like minimum result you get one of those monster of the week lovely little uh, choices to make where it's either you take damage you cause a ruckus or like draw attention or you know some unforeseen com- consequence comes in I always like those uh, that leave it up to both the player and the DM do you know what I mean where it's like I want something else to happen like all the all the plates fall off of the the shelves in the bar or something like that. Yeah. Right. Or if you got to choose of like, oh, you're if you roll the one like either your die damage, you know, stays the same or still goes down or whatever, or you take, you know, like a certain amount of psychic damage and it can go up or something like that. Well, see, because then then you're giving options like you're giving options to run away from the negative, mm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, sure. If I have a if I have a shitload of hit points, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll take like three psychic damage yeah. and keep my keep my dice. If I have three hit points, I'm gonna be like, lower the dice. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
And so yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it when it comes to like, I love it when it's like, like I actually really enjoy the subclass stuff to some extent. Later on, right, we're going to see it. But like when it states things like uh, it automatically drops the dice for using this. Yeah. That's right. a cost to me. And that's that's less of like, here's a gamble that's not really a gamble. Right. It's a cost. Because like your odds are ridiculous. Like once you get up to a D12, mm-hmm. you have a one in 12 chance of lowering that dice. Everything else yeah. in yeah. that spectrum is good. Is good to go. Right. And then a one and eight, and then a one and six, and then a one and four. Yeah, but then be, like yeah. when it drops down, you also have a one in a ten chance of bringing it back up to a D twelve. Right. Moving blasting Anywho, on sorry. forward. Yeah. You're no, good, I, think man. We, I think we needed to address that sort of the elephant in the room of like that part of the mechanic. Yeah. We're it's moving forward. The since, mechanic. Since, yeah, it's the mechanic. So like because like I like it. Yeah. I really do like it on a whole. I just like it more in the sense of like combat usage and like yes. moving around usage. Cause yeah. like one of my biggest problems with like the, the like we have to get these psionics classes out, right? Like that I struggle with is like Mage Hand. Just right. like talk to your DM and trip. be like, hey, can a magical hand not appear? Can I just move it with my mind? Yeah. And 10 out of 10, they're probably gonna be like, yeah. Yeah, sure. Unless somebody's specifically playing an arcane trickster rogue where it's like, oh, that's like one of their class features. Like, Yeah, like bells and you have skills that already sit in this vein. Right. It's all you have to do is apply like the imagination to be like, here's this extra thing. Bring it where like, you want I really to. like it for the fighter because, again, like, yeah, let's let's give martial classes cool more options, yeah. more tool belts and like more like. Telekinetic Adept, you have mastered new ways to use your telekinesis. Psionic Thrust, when you deal damage to a target with the telekinetic strike of your psionic talent, you can force it to make a strength saving throw, 8 plus proficiency plus intelligence. Unless the save succeeds, you can knock the target prone or move it up to 10 feet in any direction horizontally. Uh, That was one of the options. Telekinetic Move. It's a force push. Yes, love it. Uh, It's a Jedi and it's a force push. If your psionic talent die is available, you can move an object or a creature with your mind. As an action, you target one loose object that is large or smaller or one willing creature other than yourself. If you can see the target and it is within 30 feet of you, you can move it up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. Alternatively, if it's a tiny object, you can move it to or from your hand. Either way, you can move the target horizontally, vertically, or both. When you take this action, your psionic talent die decreases by one die size. There's that mechanic of decreasing the die size to do something. Yeah, Um, yeah, you you did a big thing with it, and so you get drained some. This is two features. This is, like, options and choices and not just one thing that gets kind of, like, glommed in. I remember for the rogue specifically, I think it was also the same for the Psy Knight or whatever, the Psychic Warrior. You had to choose by short rest whether or not you could telepathize or telekinesize or reaction shield one of the three. And you didn't know what it was you were going to need ahead of time. You just had to prepare it. I like that these small things are just always on. Get yes. more small things to do, more tools in the belt. 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. You more don't small make a, tools. Like, you do make a wizard prepare, but they're preparing from like a much larger number. Yeah. Vast and variety. It's spells, you know what I mean? And like, so like as a fighter, you don't tell a battle master, like, hey, you only get one maneuver. Yeah. And that's it. P- like, it's why that feat sucks so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's why like the, the UA where you get to like swap them out what a prepared maneuvers thing i like it so much you know it's it's telekinesis how how can you fuck it up do you know what i mean uh i like that it's the telekinetic movement to me seems very much like a tactical thing like you would find as much use for it in a fight as you would uh like out of combat yeah Um, it's yeah it can be utility as well as combat yeah, it's very much the force where it's like, oh shit, there's a bunch of guys over there with crossbows. Let me just move this crate. Mm, k- crate is in the way. I have full cover, you know, and now I can continue doing whatever. The the tiny object. Oh my god, there's a key. Zoop. You know, like if they're Come if you're me. running away, you know, and it only says object. It doesn't say non magical object. It's a very I mean, cinematic what's size, move. What's the size of the object? It's uh, yeah, larger, an smaller. Object, yeah, larger, smaller. Okay. Or one willing creature. So, like, let's talk about this. If uh, if there are two fighters, Adventurers League. Oh, yeah. Um, right? Oh, yeah. You have a battle master and you have one of these guys, right? And somebody disarms Disarm. a dude and you're up next and you just pull their sword to you. Yep. Or across the battlefield. And, and now it's they like, yeah, just not have send swords. it. 
Yeah. That's awesome. That's such a cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into that. To me, it, it is very visually inspiring. There's only so many ways, unless you are a brilliant fight choreographer, as Andrew is, to say, I hit him with my fist and or butt. But to me, this Princess instantly... Peach. Nice. Usually with the butt. I love this. Uh, Psy enhanced metabolism, 10th level. The psionic energy flowing through your mind, uh, through you, has bolstered your mind and body. Um, you have resistance to poisons, psychic damage, thetans, toxins, bad vibes. You are immune to the poison condition. I love resisting bad vibes. Dig it. Dig it. Little little banner. Don't mind it at all. Poison and psychic damage. Interesting choices. I guess that's very monk-ish. Do you know what I mean? It's very... It, I think it would make more sense if it was, like, maybe force damage rather than poison, but I understand why it's not force, because that would be probably way more OP than poison. Yeah, poison and psychic seems to me to be a good mi mixture of less likely damage sources. I, I, I like those, and to me, uh, as all of these things should be, uh, hopefully, the DM would put you in a situation where the Psy guy can thrive, and shrug off being poisoned from mind over matter or something like that. I, I, I always think these things are interesting and, and make for good cinema. Poison immunity is like... That's not nothing. It's not that big of a deal until it is. Like, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when it needs to be, you may encounter it a couple checks. times, but like, you fight a green dragon, you're going to be real happy with poison immunity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're just yeah. like, oh, your breath? Suck it. <laughs> I'm good. Ah, smells nice. And psychic damage is one of those that, like, very few people can get resistance to at all. I think not even, like, what is it, the bear totem gets resistance to everything but it's psychic? Everything but psychic. Everything but psychic, yeah. yeah. Um, bulwark of Force. Which makes such sense. Yeah. This is going to sound familiar. Uh, the 15th level Cyanite feature. You can shield yourself and others with telekinetic force. As a bonus action, you can choose creatures, which include you, that you see within 30 feet of you, up to a number uh, equal to your intelligence modifier. Each of the chosen creatures is protected by half cover for one minute or until you're incapacitated. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, unless you decrease your psionic talent die by one size to use this feature again. So this time, it's a, it's a little payment that you have to do to reduce it in order to refresh your ability. I love it. Give me more modularity. Give me more choices to make. Half that's cover? Cool. That's pretty cool. What is that, 2 AC? Yeah, plus 2 AC, I think. For half cover? From ranged or from yes. all? From from all. It's just if you from have all. half cover, it's just plus two, yeah. What is that? I mean, like, I don't know of another spell that, like, just gives everybody a flat AC boost. That's pretty nice. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, that's, it's a I cool... mean, you're giving everyone a shield. It's shield of faith for multiple people. It's shield of faith for everybody. Amazing. N love it. 15th level? Is it a little late? I think it's okay. I think it's pretty good because bounded I think accuracy. Just for everybody, that yeah, I think it's yeah. great. I think that's great to for fifteenth level in the sense of like a two AC boost is nothing to sneeze at, especially like fifteenth level when people's AC is like twenty two or whatever, getting up to like the twenties, the eighteens, right? Like you take somebody that's just an eighteen, like if your wizard can get to right. like has mage armor, right, and can get to an eighteen, you've just made a wizard with a twenty AC plus it's pretty shield. awesome. Like yeah. and be and bounded accuracy accuracy means that it's always going to be a good buy. AC is always going to be worth your resources, yeah. no it's matter what helped. level you are. Uh, telekinetic mastery: your ability to move creatures and objects with your mind is matched by few. If your psionic talent die is available, you can cast a telekinesis spell requiring no components. Your spell casting ability for this spell is intelligence. When you cast this spell, your psionic talent die increases by one die size. This is the capstone. It's the capstone, though. I think it's bad. You get access to one spell. Yeah, but it's, you know, at with, will. with the current mechanic, yeah, it's at will. Like, I, I think it's really cool because it's a, it's an upgrade of a feature that you already have, right, with the telekinetic movement. You get better at that. Now you can, you know, whatever the limit is, things that are, like, uh, either large or huge or whatever and, like, up to 1,000 pounds, and you can just do it. It increases your die size by one whenever you do it. So, you know, with with the mechanic as it is, you've you've basically got, you know, not not quite at will, but you can still do it whenever. And like I feel like it's a, a strong way to like cap off like what this class does. I mean, it's a hell of a spell. Like what I would like what I would love to throw out there, because I'm gonna bring it up when we talk about the rogue up next, mm -hmm. right? Is I know it's I know it's in the capstone position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I like that there is a level of fluff. Yeah. Frankly. 
because almost every subclass has a level of like a fluff. This isn't necessarily gonna make you stronger. This isn't necessarily like a really a really viable. good power, right? Like right. Right. this is kind of like this kind of def- is a definitive like maybe outside of combat or or other thing. Mm-hmm. Like my uh, one of my struggles with the rogue coming up is I think it's all combat. It's no, it's just all lethal. Mm-hmm. Like it's all damn yeah. good. Yeah. And like there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like when you do that, like let's talk Moon Druid. Yeah. Right? When you do right. that, you push away the want to play any other stuff Anything else mm-hmm. to some extent. Like you'll always have people that are more interested in like a certain style. Like I want to be more of a, a spell casting druid. Like right. cool, moon druid's not necessarily for you. When you really sit down and look on paper at like what can I do with one of these moon druids, the one I'm gonna pick. <laughs> yeah, like um, I can turn into I, an elemental. <laughs> yeah, I, I I certainly agree that there are so many more important things than rolling dice to do damage. This is a fifth level spell. It's really nothing to sneeze at. And at will, you know, makes it really fucking attractive and stuff. But 18 levels into the class, um, I don't know. I, I, give me one more spell. Give me one, you know, two. Give it. Te- give me telekinesis and something smaller. You know what I think would have been a really cool thing for an 18th level fighter? Hmm. You don't even need a fifth level. You need a first le- first level at will. At fully. will shield mm. as a fighter. Right? Interesting. Then, then it's just then limited by reaction. Then you're pushing like the reaction limitation on a fighter, right? If you're playing as a sentinel, which you already gotta, you, you gotta get, you gotta weigh right. that option. You got, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of things to weigh that option. Mm. But like in the telekinetic vein, mm-hmm. shield Perfect. to me is like the most fitting thing ever. Yeah, it's like yeah. whenever I create a wizard, right? Like I pretty much think like dex is not a measurement of. I'm super agile. I'll dodge everything. It's, it's a measurement mental. of like, I can like put like a little bit of a barrier there or like I can warp space and time around your swing so that you miss slightly. Like, because I just don't buy that any wizards like, watch me dodge. Do like, more sweet flips. You could do that. Flip wizard. But like, I would much rather be like, watch me Doctor Strange float. That's my acrobatics, right? Like, right, right. My mind is my acrobatics. But yeah, I mean, like, I think you could give them telekinesis and shield. Hell yeah, dude. I'd have no problem. Hell yeah. I'd, I'd play this fighter. Yeah, it's a cool fighter. I would play this Joe. fighter. <laughs> um, my chakras are open. He's ascended. Cressica, whatever she may say, her kombucha is not what she thinks it is. And <laughs> I would play this fighter. Now, Joe, I, I have a question. Do you want to play this more? Or your battle master more. Man, it depends on the campaign. Because yeah. any okay. campaign, I would drop the battle master into any setting. Any campaign. It could be Conan. It could be Wild Sheep Chase. It could be whatever. I would love it. It could be Strahd. This would have to be something special. This would have to be a campaign Star Wars. where, <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, where yeah. This, is yeah. a, this is the world. Like you're going to um, deal with like mind flayers. Like we're going in the Underdark and we're doing some like yes. aberration stuff. We're gonna get but the fact that, that we're in the underdark. The fact shadow. that I have to make that like either or is to me this is a good subclass. You know, For sure. the fact that there is a world where I would play this. I have almost no qualms with the fighter. I actually have very few qualms with the subclasses. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, ju- just, it's just like the skills part of the mechanics. Well, it's just the skills part of the mechanics that like is what grates on me the most with this from a DM sure. point of view. Yeah, like because. How do you create puzzles if people are just like, fuck the puzzle? <laughs> right. Well, let's and think about that. There's options. As as we stew, maybe we think about what a Psy campaign would be differently. We're three DMs. You know, we can figure out like what, how we would approach conflict and troubles more. Like, for example, with Conan, you guys are beef people, Right. So the amount of the amount of mooks that I throw at you is never really going to change the overall like equation of I eat NPCs, right? Right. So mm-hmm. everything sure. else, ha- which means that well, I can use that weaknesses. Exactly. Where how do you design for the the when they're strong versus when they're weak? And so what let's I mean, think about over the next couple for Psy how we would change that. For sure. My struggle when it comes to like the skill checks is that to me as a DM means that, like, A, I have to watch my players, which you're going to have to do anyway as a DM. Like, any good DM is, like, let me learn from how they're playing. Yeah. Right? 
But like, if people are starting to stack bonus dice, I'm gonna have to go off book, off script with what the DM book says. Like, yeah, oh, thirty is like clearly a success. Like, if someone rolls over a thirty, that's a success. I'm gonna have to be like, nope, sorry. Like, you need a fifty to do this skill check. Like, yeah. or you know well, what I mean? Like, that's the thing. There's things in the DM's guide that are that are like natural 20s are not always successes, right? That you can't be bullied by the dice into changing Breaking your world. physics. If I do an athletics check to jump to the moon, I, knew you I can roll a 20. <laughs> like straight up, you can roll a 20. You're not going to jump to the moon. And you can uh, Jordan not... jump. You could dunk really well. But you can jump really fucking high, but you're not jumping to the moon. You're jumping basically the highest anybody's ever jumped before. That's what that means. And to the same way, like trying to diplomacy with a character that doesn't want to give you what they want you want them to give you will do something. But if they have something in their brain that's like, I will never do this, a good talking isn't going to change that. It might open the door down the line to changing something that. Else. For sure. Yeah. Or to that exact goal, but months later, you know, like you, you you can't just meet somebody one time, really hit it off with them, and then they give you like the keys to the kingdom. Maybe that creates the relationship and the strong relationship that later that character can be convinced. For sure. Yeah. I but just, that is like, hard as a DM. That's really hard. Oh, it's me. I'm back. The soul knife. I'm back. Where's my... <laughs> My He's so edgy. Brain. Oh, it is me. It is me. Hmm, what? Aren't I doing the soul knife? No, you're doing the sorcerer. I thought I was doing the rogue. Do you want the rogue? You yes. are the sorcerer oh, take boy. The rogue. I don't want the sorcerer. Take the rogue. I don't want magic boy. Get that out of my house. Hey, just kidding. It was I'm the soul knife from the original Mystic UA. I'm I fucking suck. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna give it to over to the real, the new soul knife. Bye, assholes. He hey, left. it's me, the new soul knife. Hey, I'm just as edgy. Hello, friends. Jonah here to say thank you for listening to this episode of Talk and Shop. Heads up, I know we mentioned throwing the video of this recording session up on Patreon, but we did run into some technical difficulties, and so that may or may not still be going up at some point. And if it does, Andrew won't actually show up in the video. We were still figuring stuff out with Zoom. We'll probably just try again at some point. Technology's weird. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our incredible partner, Dice Envy. Y'all, have you seen these dice? Because if you have, I don't need to sell you on them. You know how good they are, and no doubt you're on your computer buying more of them right now. But if you haven't, come close and listen to my voice. They have released some new sets, including their new Math Rocks line of stone dice. The first two sets, the Arch Druid and the Paragon, are incredible. Go take a look and drool over them. You can get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to DiceEnvy.com slash QuestCo or by using promo code QuestCo at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of the Quest Company, please do us a favor and go to our page on the Apple Podcasts app or wherever you listen to your podcast and leave us a rating and review. It is a huge help to us and we read every review that comes in. And if you really love what we do here at the Quest Company and you want to take the next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. For example, up on our Patreon now is the first episode of our upcoming side quest, Kanoko Origins. It is a spinoff of Postcards from Pearl over on Questco Jr. set 1,000 years in the past, and it's got a bit of a darker, more adult twist. I'm running the game for Joe and Andrew, and they've got some awesome characters, and that campaign is already shaping up to be a lot of fun and a wild ride, so check it out. All that to say, if you want to give us that support and get that early access, you could do so at patreon.com slash Podcast. We also have a link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanypodcast.com. If you would like to contact us, you could do so directly through the Connect page on our website or by finding us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at the Quest Company. You can also come hang out with us in our Discord. If you need links to any of those things, go check out our website. It's all there. 
I'd like to thank Joe Lytus for editing this episode, along with the artist whose music is featured in it. Thank you to Doug Maxwell for the songs Swing Bada Bing and Banshur Raga. And thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. Additional sound design by Slappy. That's all for me, so let's resume our journey so we can keep on opening those chakras and expanding our minds. Don't forget your J.O. Crystal! Thank you for listening to Talk and Shop here at the Quest Company. Uh, no, let's get into this. I'm going to go like really quick through this because like I don't think it's that much different. It utilizes the main new mechanic, but like we're going we're going to roll pretty quick through it. You're a soul knife, whatever that means to you. I don't care about the flowery words for it. It's whatever. It's it's a it's a rogue that uses soul, brain blades. Br- soul knives. Brain blades. They're probably like a ghostly green or a teal or a purple. And that's fine, whatever. You're original. Um, so, uh, third level, psionic talent. You get access to psionic dice. Same mechanic, right? Oh, my God, Joe, what are you doing? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. He's taken, he's taken he a screenshot of himself in the drawer. And now a himself still burns. in front of, oh, my God, there's two Joes now. Joe, I really wish you were high because I feel like you would be freaking the fuck out right now. <laughs> <laughs> you like, oh. It might be. Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, you get your psionic talent die, and it starts It starts at a size, which is a D6. Awesome. You can always use your psionic talent die in the following ways. Psy bolstered knack. Here you go. This is where if you fail an ability check using a skill or tool with which you have proficiency, you can roll the psionic talent die and add that number rolled to your check, potentially turning failure into success. I struggle with this. I wish it had the requirement of a later thing on there. All of that to say, I wish it said, if you use it, it decreases in size. I wish it said that, even just for a skill check. Don't care. Yeah. Right. I do like that it is essentially said, if you fail. Yeah. It's not. It's not pre-stackable. Right. I understand that, and that's yeah. all cool too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I think, I think it also says that because like. That's to tip that in the scale of the fa- like the player, yeah. In the sense of like, you don't have to use it unless you get to know that you needed to use it, right? Which irks me a little bit yeah. as a DM I agree. for like the like, let me fish to know the number I need, right? Well, do you think that it's one of those where you'd have to anytime you use it, it decreases, or it's like if it works, it decreases the size? No, I think anytime, yeah. like uh, I think anytime I think it's it. such a powerful mechanic when it comes to skill checks. Yeah, like just look at a simple like first level bless on a party. Yeah. Just a D4 cost a spell slot. Can be huge. Bane can be huge yeah. at those early levels. Uh, guidance. Any level. Just a D4 can be huge. Yeah. Right? So that this ever even gets up to a D12 is like wild to me. Yeah. I don't think it should scale that high. Mm. I think the height of it should maybe be a D8. Is is like how I feel. Does the the superiority die the battle master max out at the D twelve? I'm not 100 percent sure. They might have they might have mapped it off of that. Yeah, I I, I feel like I think it does, and I think that it, they're trying to keep it in line with that. I disagree though with that because it's for a fighter. I understand why it's a D twelve. A lot of it's to do with like doing extra damage or like forcing like a, a check off of it. Like I, I get that. Before that one Earth Ar- unearthed arcana that I struggled with horribly. Before it was like, use your battle mastery points to persuade. Yeah, we right. can get rid of that. Right. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. before that, like, and which I, this was my issue with that. It's yeah. like, okay, so now I roll a, an extra d12 as a fighter to persuade. Right. I'm just as dangerous as the bard in persuasion. Like, right. I flex my muscles and persuade real good. Yeah, so again, it's the same issue. Of Anywho, it should cost. I think it could be easily fixed. And I actually don't mind it for the rogue. Because they're skill monkeys anyway. Because that's right. kind of their land. I failed the stealth check in this part of the mission. Even as a DM, it's like, I'd much rather watch you succeed at a stealth mission right. than have that failure. Maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I'm fine with it. I just wish there was more cost to it. Yeah. Just get Moving a little, on. These yeah. are not the droids you're looking for and be on your way. Psychic Whisper. I am whisper. such a fan. 
It's dope. It's um, good. cool. It's dope. Like, you have the ability to use telepathy to talk between yourself and your party members. And literally, they say, perfect for quiet infiltration. And it's yeah. like, yeah. yes. Like, anytime you can get a rogue the message spell, it's Hell lethal yeah. because the ability to, like, let me tell you what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, the recon. Right? Within a mile. When you do so, mm-hmm. roll your psionic talent die and choose creatures you can see up to a number of creatures equal to the number rolled. Love that. Into that. I yeah, roll shitty. It's awesome. I, like, if I roll a one, right, which is actually not terrible for the psionic dice, right? Like, cool, I have telepathy with one person. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah. if I roll higher, sweet bonus. Like, you know what I mean? All yeah. I need is one. For one hour, amazing. The chosen creature can speak telepathically with you, and you can speak telepathically with them. No action required. Amazing. You and the other creature must be within one mile of each other. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Heist master. Buh. And a creature You're Simon Peck's can... character from Mission Impossible. Yeah. You're like, you have everybody on the headphones. For yeah. sure. I love it. The creature that's connected to can no action at any point in the connection, and that you don't need to speak the same language. Huge. Right, yeah. like, yeah. which means you could start talking in a code language out loud and send it to them. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. you can, like, create, like, cool shit with this. Yeah. Die size changes the same way. Love it. I, I love punishment. it. Does this say that, like, yeah, no, that just stays the same. I'm fine with yeah. it. Like, I'm yeah. so cool with skills that aren't, like, it's not, that's utility. It's not breaking the game Yeah. to have, like, there's literally a magic item that does the same thing. Which yeah. is what I wish they would look to more. Is more magic items? Well, no, no, no. Not even making magic items. But, like, look to magic items that, like, are, might be really rare and take some of those mechanics and put them into subclasses. Yeah. Because I think you have really cool. There's one that's about to come up that Matt Mercer literally made as a magic item yeah. in the first campaign. And I was like, I want that. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. Like, I'm about to rave about it. But we'll let's get through uh, Psychic Blades first. Oh, not Psychic Blades. Yeah. Oh, no, Psychic yeah, Blades, Psychic yeah. Blades, because we don't have to talk about the mechanic. Haha, <laughs> did it. Because uh, it's the same. Psychic Blades. This is uh, familiar territory, um, but we kind of refined it, I think, a little bit better, which makes me happy. Uh, you can freehand, basically, range attack uh, yeah. a, a magic brain knife. Yeah. Um, the range for it is 60 feet, and it has no long range. I love that. It's simple. It's clean. Yeah. Like, Just you got to be within 60 feet to to shoot them with mind bullets. Pew. That's telekinesis, Jesus, Kyle. How about the power to move you? Um, it has a simple melee properly, property and uh, fitness and throne, yada yada. Uh, the damage equals a D6, which I think is cool. It's a 60 foot short bow off yeah. your free hand. Like it feels very, uh, like you could skin it as gambit. You could skin it as like, so many things like oh yeah like you can skin it as fucking uh like assassin dbz like there's so much like <laughs> cool shit you could like flavor that just do finger guns baby. you can flavor it as finger guns literally like it's everything um i liked this mechanic in the first one i like that they did this after you attack with that blade mm-hmm. right you can make a secondary attack with another one right provided Provided that your uh, other hand is also open. Correct. Right. So like you're basically like running around like hands free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gambiting. Um, but it's a D4, not a D6. It's a dagger. I love it. Yeah. I love that. You get a little bit of a boost. You're basically playing a rogue that has a short bow and a knife. Yeah. On turns. Fucking rules. But it's not like let me take two short bow attacks. Cool. It's cool. It's clean. It's simple. I think it's well defined in this. Yeah. I, I like. To the point where they're literally like the damage die of this bonus attack is a D four, rather than instead a D6. of a D six. Like yeah. they paint it out. It's just a chance to if you miss on the first one with your sneak attack that you can pull get a that sneak attack and sneak do a little bit less knife. damage. Yeah, this is how I played Oblivion as a sneaky wizard. I would sneak around and I would open up with pew pew or whatever. Yeah. Feels good. It's it's a cool. Like, I actually really like this class for a rogue, especially because of uh, these next two. Oh, um, oh yes. Homing strikes. Uh, this is all right I, because it does what I like about it. Uh, if you make an attack roll with your psychic blades 
and miss the target, you can roll your psionics talent die and add that number rolled to the attack roll. Mm. If this causes the attack to hit, your psionics talent die decreases by one die size regardless of number rolled. Yep. Love it. Yep. Love it, love it, love it. It's an extra chance to be like, you don't even have to use it on your first one, right? If I throw my first psychic die or dagger and it doesn't hit, I throw my second one, right? Because I'm like, man, I really want to get that sneak attack damage off. And it's close, but it doesn't hit. Then I can be like, it's worth dropping it. Yeah. You know I what love I mean? That. Like, it's a good tool belt. I like the design. Very into it. Psychic teleportation. It. Ooh, so good. Nailed it. They nailed it 100%. They completely ripped off Matthew Mercer, but like, that's fine. Like, rip off things that are good. Uh, if your psionics talent die is available, you can hurl your psychic blade to magically transport yourself to another location as a bonus action. Yes. Uh, awesome. As a bonus action, cool. you manifest one of your psychic blades and throw it to an at an unoccupied space you can see up to a number of feet away, equal to five times the highest number on your psionics talent die. Yes. Yes. You then teleport to that space. The blade vanishes, and your psionics talent die decreases by one die size. Okay. Let's get into it, because there's it. good and, I think, a little bit of bad in here. Mm. Right? Okay. I think... Oh, I just kicked the table. Jonas. Jonas freaking out over there on that side. <gasps> um, so, here's what I like, right? Just chill out, man. Rogue teleportation, right? Smock a You're dunk. basically like, hey, rogue... Here's Misty Step, right? Which is what all rogues want anyway. Yeah, they like want the it. ability to get in and out. Matthew it. Mercer made this as a dagger magical item that you could throw and then teleport to. Yeah. Right? So, like, you had to burn an attack action, but then you could be wherever it hit. Yeah. Right? I loved that. Still love that. I think it's a cool magic item. Oh, Joe. Um, <laughs> that is a cool item. He's big old. Oh, yep. There it is. Okay. Um, There's those the video goofs. So, where I struggle with this, right? Mm. So our, our our five times thing, right? Yeah, five times. I totally highest, get that because yeah. that's like we're simplifying it down to like, I, whatever I roll is how many boxes I move. No, it's not. Yeah, it's not how many you roll. It's just whatever the largest. Size whatever the largest is. is. Yeah. Right. Cool. That's fine. I kind of wish mm -hmm. it was what you rolled. Ooh. A little bit that you could go up. Like if you rolled a, a one, then it's like. You teleport five feet. Yep. Blip. I, I kind of wish it was that huh. because I like the gamble. the gamble. I really like, I love the moments in the game where it's like, I need this to work and it either is glorious yeah. or it's just like. Falls short. Like it just falls short yep. because there are those moments. Gandalf can't get away from the Balrog. He falls short by like five inches. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it makes for. An incredible story hook. Thank you, mm -hmm. Tolkien. Right? Like, there there are moments where, like, hailing is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. My only struggle, like, I, I, like, I don't think it has to be that. Like, I certainly am fine with, like, you just do the maximum. My only struggle with that is, wait, no. Max would be 12, correct? Yeah, 12. So at max, you would have six. a 60 foot teleport. 60 bonus foot? Okay, action. never mind. I lied. I was doing the math wrong and I was like 120 feet and I was That'd like, be 10 times, how is yeah. the range longer than the distance of the thrown dagger? We're yeah. good. It's, it's Yeah, max is out at the same, which is cool. Max is out at the same, which I'm totally fine with. Rock on. That's all I'll say about it. I love that, uh, 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 where is it? The Sionic's talent die decreases at the end of it. Like, it is a skill that is burning. Your resources. Resources. Yeah. Which I think is important because I think the game is about resource management to some extent. I think any class that's just like, like at will mm -hmm. is such a powerful thing in this game. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it should remain the most powerful thing in this game. Being able to do stuff at mm -hmm. will. Because fighters can attack four times, at level 20 they become one of the most dangerous classes. Yeah. The fact that if I get close enough to the wizard, yeah, you can bend the universe, but like... I action surge and I hit you eight times. Yeah, I might. You're toast. I might yeah. one shot you. Yeah, you yeah. know, like push you prone, attack with advantage seven times. You know, like, but you, yeah, like, yeah, you got to get to the wizard as a fighter. Yeah, but like, you are True. arguably just as powerful when it comes down to the things that you do well. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're the archer fighter, you just shoot eight arrows at once <laughs> into them. True. Yeah. Um, anywho, I love it. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. It's awesome. I, yeah. Psychic cool. Veil, 13th level. This is also incredible, in my opinion. 
uh, you can weave a veil of psychic static to mask yourself. Basically, you can become invisible for 10 minutes. Cool. Right? Anything and everything you're wearing, you just become invisible for 10 minutes until you dismiss the effect or you attack someone or force someone to make a saving throw. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest unless you decrease your psionics talent die by one die size to use this feature again. Similar to the fighter, right? Like, I actually really like that mechanic in the sense of like, and I wish they used it for almost like a a lot of the terminology because I like the like, you can use it once. Mm -hmm. You can use it once. Unless. If you want to use it a second time, you got to drop it. Yeah. I wish it had the caveat of it can't come back up. Mm, it permanently reduces it until you rest. For the day. Until you long rest. Yeah. Like I like that. I, I think I, I think like the the exertion. I would be okay with almost all the features being that sort of mentality. You can use it again, but it's going to mm-hmm. permanently be weaker for the day. Mm. Well, it's you like you can't climb back up. It makes me think of the uh, the wizard uh, sort of capstone where you get the one like free third level one or whatever, but then if you use it again. Uh, then you get like exhausted or whatever. Right. 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 Yeah. I like this so much more than when we last talked about it in December, and it's for something that I re- I just realized none of these things so far have had anything to do with intelligence. So yeah, for the rogue, it my is not. primary critique of the soul knife last time was that you had to pump a useless stat to oh, sure. get something that was okay. That gets and now it's just great. it's just you do it. Yeah. Yeah. I you just do it. I really dig this. My biggest drawback is because, like, let's talk about the capstone, and I'll throw it out there. Anyone have a problem with that guy that we want to discuss? The psychic sonic veil? No, I dig yeah, it. Cool. I dig it Less. too. I mean, it's not int anymore. It's dex. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like you just become invisible for ten minutes. Like, <laughs> ta-da. And as any oh, rogue, with the psychic veil. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Like free invisibility is damn good. Yeah. Because now you're freeing up the concentration that someone like wait no is invisible concentration uh no it's not greater is not regular is regular is um you're just freeing up like a wizard from having to like have something up on you seventeenth level rend mind you can sweep your psychic blades directly through a creature's mind <laughs> uh, when you use your psychic blade to deal sneak attack damage. To a creature, uh, you can force the target to make a wisdom saving throw DC equal to 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your dexterity modifier. So, a lot mm-hmm. um, at 17th yeah. level yeah. as a rogue. Unless they succeed, the target is stunned until the end of your next turn. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest unless you decrease your psionics talent die by one die size to use this feature again. Again, I love that terminology. I like that. I love this skill. I like it so much more. It's yeah. dirty. It sets up your team for so much. Yes. Yes. Here's my one struggle with the whole class. No fluff. Yeah, it's all it's all lethal. It is all fucking lethal. Yeah. And I sit back and I look at this. It's like, I'd, pl- I'd play this over an assassin. I, I would never pick an assassin over this. Yeah, straight up. I, I get to I get to extra crit? Cool. I'll just hope I crit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. It's fine. I would much rather be able to teleport and the, be invisible yeah. and uh, kill people with no evidence. Yeah. Like, oh, no, it says it when you get the psychic blades. Uh, that that uh, psychic blades don't leave a mark. Yeah, they don't leave a mark. Yeah. Right? So yeah, you can basically, like, kill people without All, all the reasons we loved that part back in December are still there. Yeah. I love it. I think it's, it's a really it's great. well-written class. I think it'll probably show up in a book. Um, I'm hoping it gets nerfed a little bit. No, I just hope we whittle down the mechanics a little bit more of tweak it the psionics classes. Again, when you get to the higher levels, you're looking at almost never running out of a resource. Yeah. Ever. Or having yeah. a reason to run out. Unless you're just like, well, I want to teleport every turn as a rogue. Right. At higher levels, I, I hope your DM is coming up with ways to counter your psionic. Even if it's just like a, a class of weapon that the, the big bad guys use that every time they hit you with it, it knocks you down one die. Like, I like that. Or like Krypton or, or whatever the For anti-brain field sure. is. I'm just saying as like, field is. as far as like, rules is written. Rules is as written, written and the yeah. poor DMs that are gonna be like, I'm doing, I, I, I want a DM for my friends. And then they have one friend that's really experienced in D&D and it's like, <laughs> Yep, I'm a fucking psionics m- meth user. <laughs> I kill everyone, you know what I mean? Like. Apart from that, there you go. 
There Calm it, it back down. I screamed. Calm it down. Um, Keep it chill. Yeah, I just think about like the poor person, like like if it got published in Adventurers League, right, where it's so <sighs> cutthroat. Yeah. Because a D- oh God, DM yeah. is like, I'm trying to kill you. Right. Right. Like, and I understand as a player, like, give me all the advantages I can get, but like, right. Have fun with your game that takes like five hundred years to go through, like a day. And there's and there's already some you know danger of that already because there are other things that are available. Right, but, but you're just adding more to it. Yeah. Is my struggle. Yeah. Anywho, so Rogue, thumbs really up. good. I like it. My Hell thumbs yeah. are up for it. I think it needs a little Same. bit of like extra elbow grease, Nintendo polish. But like, other than that, like, I think it's good to go. I think it could go as it is right now. Yeah. Print and it, yeah. I would just like, as a DM, home rule like the skill check thing. Yeah. I can, I can very easily see this with very, very minor tweaks just going straight in a book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's good. I, I wish there was maybe a, a, a little bit more fluff. Yeah. Like, I think it would be fluff if, like, the invisibility was, like, a once a day mm. sort of thing. Like, a one a day use of the invisibility spell. I would love a, uh, a caveat that actually affected people's minds with the invisibility, right? Like, there's some sort of either... Like, they can't see um, you because you're, like... You're yeah, you're psychically keeping them. You're not invisible. You're making them unable to think about you seeing being seen. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I would love it if like it it only worked on like a certain like if it only worked on like you know humanoids, right? So like Mm. then as a DM, you can have so much fun. Well, I'm like yeah, if you couldn't do it on beasts because they're like so like in the same way, so simple, you can't you know do whatever specific charm stuff that works on a humanoid with a beast because or constructs. I've only got like like, three intelligence or whatever. Because like I would just love like you walk into the room and the guards don't notice you, but all the guard dogs go crazy. That's cool. Yeah, that's such a cool because that would undo true sight, but it wouldn't undo true sight for things that didn't have minds. Right. Right. So if there was a monk who had true sight or whatever, how, how do you get that stuff? I don't really remember. But um, the idea that Spell. you can perceive things no matter what. You know what would be really cool It doesn't with it? matter that you can perceive it because you can't think about it. Yeah. If it was, if it, if it was like, uh, if the language was you are undetectable to anything that has an intelligence over five. Mm. Right? Because like yes. blind sight. Something like let's that. talk about blind sight. Like dragons, right? Like yep. I think it's so much cooler that like, the dragon can't sense you because, like, it can't perceive anything can't of your think. existence. It can't think yeah. through that line of logic that there's something there. Whereas, Perfect. like, that's a fluff. dog is like, right? Oh, hi, there's a person there. You know what I mean? I can smell it. Like, hi, I want to be yeah. your friend. <laughs> and you're like, get off my leg, get off my leg. The guards <laughs> are looking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. like there's yeah. cool things. And then, like, because then, like, what happens when you go up against like? The uh, the the uh, 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 uh like a golem, a golem, or like a zombie, where it's like it doesn't have a mind. Oh, I, I meant more like just like a big stupid bruiser. Like, oh, how yeah. funny is it when you try and sneak into like the the hobgoblin camp? Oh yeah, but they're like, like, what's that guy? Yeah. Th- but their ogre is like, no, there's a person, and they're like, shut up, Ched. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> such a fun. That would be more fluff to me than just like use the invisibility spell. Right. That's exactly my feeling on it. As it stands, great. That's just like dream yeah. world. I love shit like that. Yeah. And we should make that magic item. Dare also we? Also true. <laughs> or spell. Dare we? Probably. Probably. Somebody will just put it in something. Dare we venture forward? Oh yeah, to sure. the caverns of the mind. You're already here. You are here the whole time. It is I, the psionic soul sorcerer. I've said fuck you to my former internship, and now I've unleashed the powers within my own self. I've consumed, I've eaten my J.O. crystal I was now. about to say the exact <laughs> same thing. I'm I, so happy right now. I, you cannot harm me, I ate sorcerer. the J.O. crystal I suppositoried <laughs> my J.O. crystal, and now I feel my power from it in. It is Solved in my butt, and now I have innate psionic powers. I must. Your vile perversions now. have no grasp. Bitch, that's what you think. All right, let's get into it. They will it is what I think. With a bunch of hentai out of context. Oh, in the oh chat. no! <laughs> oh no! Just get ready. That's the new life. <laughs> All right. So the uh, psionic soul sorcerer. 
as they have uh, dived into this, they've also been very clear to be like, you can also do like all of the, you know, Eldritch sort of aberrant mind stuff with this and just sort of reskin it, uh, which is interesting. That they were like, ah, yeah, you could do that, or it could be gift stuff for Eberron. There's a whole bunch of different ways that they're like, ah, yeah, magic. Just do whatever you want with it. Do whatever you want with it. Psionics, my which problem. Is, I know, which is with which UA is, psionics in general. Uh, yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I don't know what it is about psionics, but the word itself, when people are like, It's great, but, Tanya. But I am psionics. I'm like, go die. Yeah. I hate your character already. <laughs> I mean, at least it's not at least it's not like it originally was, where it's like it doesn't for the sake of, you know, resistances or whatever. So it's like it's not magic. At least it's not that. It's just it's like eh, sure. it's just different magic well, like, now. Because like I can right. get behind. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I love it for like superheroes. Like, we're talking like Professor X, awesome. Yeah. Like we're like we're talking different genres. I I fucking love it in uh, sci-fi. All over it. Yeah. I yeah. just hate Agreed. it in fantasy, and I don't know what it is. I'm yeah. like, I love the hard sci-fi version of this, where I, I'm not going to spoil anything for any of the various things that I've told you guys to watch or read over the course of the last <laughs> couple of years. But the idea that you can approach this level of psionic shit like through just pure science yes. is really fucking terrifying. I love it. I good. think that's because it has like a cornerstone for me. Mm. Like it's like you're approaching it through this. In fantasy it always comes across as like I just have it. Yeah. We already have magic. And it's ma- like that I'm, the, just, I'm just like ju- it's just magic, right? Like we already have the appeal have- of magic. Like, I was watching Supersedes. somebody talking about... Uh, I'm sorry, Jonah. We will get to You're you. Fine. I love you. Sorry. <laughs> um, fine, I was watching someone talk about world building for, like, D&D. Uh, they were talking about, like, the common mistakes of world building a D&D campaign. And, like, among the list were, like, writing a book. Right? right like, right. like the typical shit. But one of the ones they brought up that I just really hadn't thought about... Or not, not hadn't thought about, but hadn't thought about it in this way. Is, like, what is the role of magic in your world? Mm. Right, because yes. you can't ignore the fact because it's such a huge component in D and D. So, like, how does magic play? And they used this reference, and I was like, "That is brilliant." Mm-hmm. If you took just ten wizards from D and D that were fifth level and brought them into our world, everything would change. Yeah, ten people at like. The, the top of the lowest quarter of leveling. Yeah. Right? We're not even talking about like a 10th level wizard halfway it's through its leveling process. We're talking just about out of tier one. Level. Everything would change. They could create food and water at infinite every day. You like. This is what I was fucking talking about with the Harry Potter monologue. If magic existed in the real world, either. Dominion would be absolute and we would live in an awful <laughs> autarky or it would be a utopia or on the road to one of those one two of those things. things. Yeah. From one of those two things. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, from probably, one to the other swinging back. around. Right. Yeah. But like I, I just loved the concept of like and they were talking about like how many level 20 wizards did you put in your campaign? Like mm. how many because you were like, ooh, I really like the idea of this wizard. Because a single level 20 wizard has the ability to shape the existence of everything. Yeah. So you should probably have... I would say one is too much. No level 20 wizards in your campaign. Like, whereas, like, you put a level 20 fighter. You could put so many level 20 fighters in your campaign, right? Yes. It doesn't break your world. It just means there's a lot of, like, really powerful militaries. Yeah. You have one level 20 cleric. It's the Pope. They just own their own countries. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, a wizard is just so much different. And so, like, when you start talking about, like, let's add psionics, I just need UA to be as definitive with what it is. It Like, is it just magic? Like, is it just, like, a new school of magic? Cool. That's what they treated it like. That's, like... And that's why we hated it so much. Sure, but, like, if you do that, define it. I'm with you. Like, if they had defined that... I'd have been like, hell yeah. yeah, right? If it's just reskinned magic that we already had, c- cool, what's just define that. But, like, what's the I point? It's a right? different way of using it. I'm with you, Joe. Yeah. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, what's the point of making yeah. it then at that point? Just, like, let people use their imagination. But, like, yeah, it's just like, I'm like, t- just define it. Like, define what it is. Mm. Anywho, Jonah, back right. to you. Sorcery. Sorry, All right. Jonah. Out of the corner. All right. No, that wasn't the corner. I'm waiting. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have avoided the corner. You haven't avoided the corner. Thus far. Through meditation. The corner encroaches closer and closer. Meditation can't save you from the inky, ropey tentacles of the corner that will pull <laughs> you pull you into the oblivion. Right now, I am flying through the galaxy that is also the a brain that is also like a hot, naked lady. <laughs> oh, 